Hello everyone, uh, this is Laurent. I'm here with part 7.7.1, problem, simple problem 6. It's a skier that's skiing in between two hills. The two hills have two different heights, big H and small H. In between the two peaks, there is a, a ski run that runs for a total distance of 3.2 kilometers. We are asked to find two things. In part A, if there is no friction, at what speed will the skier reach the summit of peak small h? In part b, uh, if there is friction, what would be the coefficient of friction for him to have zero speed exactly at the summit of small h? In part a, we're told that we have no friction. That means that we have no external forces acting on the skier. The only thing that's happening is him and gravity. That's it. So we have conservation of energy. Now, what we must do is determine which points are important in this situation. The two points that are important are at the top of the higher peak and at the top of the lower peak. That's it. We don't care what's happening in between. We just care about those two peaks. We'll need to state what the kinetic and gravitational potential energies are at both of those peaks and then determine what the difference is between them to find what the uh, final kinetic energy is and then what the final speed is. And this is what we have. We have the fi final kinetic energy minus initial kinetic energy plus final gravitational potential energy minus initial gravitational potential energy. We know that because the problem tells us that V1 here is zero which means that all of this term here goes down to zero. Then all of this left-hand side is equal to zero, and we have the term m appearing in all three terms. It cancels away. We can divide both sides of the equation by m, and it disappears. So we can rewrite this as here, one half v, squ v2 squared plus g small h minus g big H, all of that is equal to zero. And then we solve for V2 and we plug in our numbers and we get an answer. Once you have this, you simply plug in your numbers. G is 9.8 meters per second squared. Big H is 850 meters. Small H is 750 meters. We get all of this. And that's the speed at which this gear reaches peak small H. For part B, we have uh, the same setup, the same initial height, the same final height, the same total ski run. We do have friction in this case. Because of friction, a non-conservative force, it will always take out energy from the mechanical system. In this case, that's the skier. We need to consider how long or over what distance, what path does friction act. It acts along all of the ski run, the whole 3.2 kilometers. What I have here is illustrated all throughout these two slopes. All of that is D in orange, the 3.2 kilometers. So we need to find what the coefficient of kinetic friction is. We need to find first what the work done by friction is. And to do that, we need the work energy theorem. The work energy theorem says that the change in kinetic energy plus the change in potential energy, in this case, only gravitational potential energy, is equal to the work done by all of the non-conservative forces. That includes friction, air drag, and water drag if there was any, and any external forces that would go in there. However, we know we don't have water, and there's nobody pushing on the skier. The only thing that's acting here is friction, so we can rewrite this last term as the work done by the kinetic friction force. So this is what it is. The change in kinetic energy plus the change in gravitational potential energy is equal to the work done by the kinetic friction force. By definition, the work done by the kinetic friction force is negative frictional force itself times the total distance over which the friction force acts. As before, we start with zero speed. The skier starts at rest. Unlike before, he also ends at two with a speed of zero. In between, sure, at those two points, he does. Really, we only care about this difference here. Let's rewrite that and use the definition of the kinetic friction force here to find what the coefficient of friction. We have here negative mu k n times d is equal to mgh2 
minus mgh1, where h2 is the height at peak 2, small h, h1 is the height at peak 1, big h. So we can rewrite that once again. And here, we need to stop because we don't know what the normal force acting on the skier is. To find it, we must go back to drawing a free body diagram using Newton's second law. Okay, and here we have the free body diagram. We have the gravitational force pointing straight down. We have the normal force pointing at a right angle from the slope, and we have the friction force pointing up towards the slope. The set of axis of reference is slanted with the slope so that the positive x-axis points up with the slope and the y-axis points at the right angle. The kinetic friction force goes right with the positive x-axis. This is because I drew the skier going downhill, which means that if his velocity points down, the kinetic friction force always goes against that motion, it points up that way, uphill. The gravitational force needs to be split into its components because it is at an angle with the axis. We have the x and the y components. We need to write Newton's second law only in y because the normal force here only acts in the y direction. And we have here our expression for the normal for mg cosine of theta. We can then plug that back into our initial equation and solve for uh, the only unknown that we have left. Rewritten, this is the expression that we get, negative mu k mg cosine of theta, our normal force, times d, is equal to mg small h minus mg big h, the final state minus the initial state. Once again, we can see that the mass term appears in all three terms of our equation. The mass variable appears in all three terms, so we can scrap it out. And then we can bring this negative side on the other side and flip these two. The other thing that we notice, I'm just noticing it now, is that we can get rid of this g. We don't even need it. We then solve for mu k. And here we have it, mu k is equal to 0 0.0361. We notice here that I transform d, the distance 3.2 kilometers, into its value in meters. We need the standard SI units for everything to match. And, well, that's it. Good job. Now try and find, uh, if you can find uh, the friction force and the coefficient of friction in another way other than using the work energy theorem.